This is Gemarin Ksubis Daf Ayin Ali of all the learning. It should bring an incredible schosil in the Shama of Asarizal Basra Mayor. Amir Tashem, the learning of the entire Chabura for this month of Elul should bring Asarizal Basra Mayor to an higher, higher in place in Ganiden Shel Milo. And we're holding on Ayin Amir Bees about eight lines from the bottom, and the Gemara says Gufa. Says the Gemara quoting the previous Braisa. If someone makes a nether anah from his friend and he does not have any food to eat, so what does he do? He's allowed, the one who made the nether is allowed to go to the chenveni, the storekeeper that he generally goes. That guy is not allowed to get a benefit from me. Let's just make this clear. For example, Ruvain is not allowed to get benefit from you. So you go to the storekeeper and you tell the storekeeper, listen, Ruvain can't get benefit from me, but Ruvain's starving. I want to help him out. I don't know what to do. So the storekeeper understands and who nice in life. The storekeeper goes and gives him. And then you go and you pay the storekeeper. Says the Gemara, continuing, Similarly, if he has a house to build, he has a fence to build, he has a field to harvest, and what, again, the same scenario, and he has no money to hire workers, no money, and the one that he's not going to get benefit from wants to help him, so I want to help this guy, this guy is not going to get benefit from me, but he needs workers in his field, so what am I allowed to do? I'm allowed to go to the workers who normally work in his house and say to them, Many that person made a net, there's not like a benefit from me. And I don't know what to do for him. And they understand. And again, And then they come and they collect wages. So basically, in all these scenarios, we're finding ways to circumvent the nether. Ruvain can't get benefit from you. So you can't directly give Ruvain money. But you know that Ruvain needs food. You know that Ruvain needs his field plowed. So you go and you take care of that which he needs. And then you go and you pay the people on your own. And a similar third scenario. Ruvain's on the road and he doesn't have anything to eat. So you want to give Ruvain something to eat. But you know that you're not allowed to give Ruvain something to eat. Because Ruvain is not allowed to get benefit from you. So what do you do? You give it to someone else, l'shamatana. You give it to someone else as a present. And then Reuven goes, and he goes, and he's allowed to eat it from that person. And let's say to someone else, you and Reuven are in a desert. And Reuven is starving, but you're not allowed to give Reuven something to eat. Why not? Because Reuven made a nether, he's not getting benefit from you. So what do you do? Put the food, put the drink on a rock or a fence. And say, Say they're mufkar, they're hefkar to anyone that wants. And the other one comes and eats. And is allowed. But the Rav Yosi Oiser, and he says these are all forbidden. Amar Rava, my time with the Rav Yosi. What is the reason for Rav Yosi? Kizera, you know what the reason is? It's forbidden. It's a decree. Misham Maisa the base Chayron. The reason why Rav Yosi this allows you from pulling, we'll call Tishdek, is because of the Maisa the base Chayron. Rashi over here just tells us Benedar and Perikas Shutfim. Rashi doesn't really fill in the details. But in an Adarim, we fill out the details that what happened was his son was marrying off his son and he wanted that the Kalu's grandfather could come to the wedding. However, the problem was the Kalu's grandfather was also to get benefit from him. So how was he able to, do, you know, to bypass? How was he able to again circumvent the Nadar? So the father said, the Chatzar, the Suda, the entire Chasna is given to you as a gift, but only so that the Kalu's grandfather could come and eat at the banquet. And then the person heard and said, No, they're mine. And I want to give them all to Hektish. And the person said, What do you mean? I don't want to give it to Hektish. I only want that he could come to the wedding. And said the Gemara over there, the sin's only reason was that he's doing it. To let him come, clearly it wasn't a real gift. And that's the reason why the Chachamim rule, they're not allowed to do it. So in our case as well, 
if in all these scenarios we're nervous that maybe the only reason why he's giving it is to benefit the other person, but it's not a real matana, it's not a real hefker, that's the reason why it would not be allowed according to Rav Yaisi. And we continue, Rav Yudaimir Bi Yisrael Chaydash Echad, back into the Mishnah. We're on the top of Ayn Alf, Amin Alf, for two lines down, the Rav Yudah and Mishnah taught us that in the case of Yisrael, they wait one month, but in the case of Ikayin, they wait two months. Again, to remind yourself of the reason being that in the case of the Kayin, they wait extra because the Kayin is not going to remarry his divorcee. But comments the Gemara that if we were to look back in the Mishnah of Yud, the seemingly is repeating the Dinah Tanakama. Hai Nu Tanakama. So Amar Abaya Kohanes Aslash Minan. Says Abaya, you know what it's coming to teach me? It's coming to teach me the din of Kayin Hanes. That's the Chiddush that he's arguing that Rav Yud is teaching us. That a koyhenis gets two months, gets the extra month. Meaning, it's true that the base din of Yisrael is the same between Rav Yudin and Tanakama. He's adding on the detail about the koyhenis. Rav Amar, Chaydesh Malav Chazer Chaser, Ikebeinayo. Says Rav, no. There's a fine nuance of a difference between Rav Yehuda and between the Tanakama. The difference being, if it's a complete month, a 30 or 29 day month, Rav Yudha says a chaydesh, which Tanakama said 30 days. Omar Rav comes along Rav and begins a new topic. Back into the din of the Mishnah, we're going to have a machleka, says Rav, now we're really going to get more clarity in the Mishnah that we learned yesterday, that in the case the Mishnah said that the husband has to hire a, a shlish, has to hire someone to support his wife for up to 30 days, so says Rav, that's only b'mifarish. That's only when the husband said that the nether is for 30 days or less. Avul bistam. But if the husband said a nether indefinitely, he did not specify an amount of time, then yoytzi la'altar v'yitik ksuba, then immediately he asked the divorce to give his wife the ksuba. U Shmuel, Omar and Shmuel disagrees, avilu bistam li'yoytzi. Says Shmuel, even if there was no specific time for the nether, still you do not have to get divorced. Why? So Shmuel says, even though it seems that the nether is indefinite, you don't give that, that this nether is only for X amount of days, or if the nether is for longer than 30 days. Says Shmuel, no, you still have the requisite month or two months, Kayin Yisrael, to stay married. Why? And though that's when you would support with a parnas. The reason being, because... Maybe you'll be able to annul the vow. Asks the Gemara of Bachad Zimna. But Rav and Shmuel already have his mach like as Titanan. We learned in a Mishnah previously in Samachalf. Hamadir Zishta So one forbids his wife from having relations with him. And of course, we learned back then, a meat, he forbids the benefit of relations that he will not have. That he will not have the benefit onto his wife. You're not allowed to make someone else, someone else's benefit forbidden. And what the machlekes? Hopefully, you should sound familiar with a verbatim gemara back then. Only when they explained explicitly how long the neder is going to last. If they said indefinitely, yotze without of eating suba. Whereas the shmuel amar vilu bistam nami lo yotze shami yibzach basach lenedrei. So I asked the gemara, why are you telling me? Why are you telling me that the machlekes you rav are? Excuse me. The rav is saying that the machlekes in the mishnah rav and shmuel the gemara is explaining is between the farish and stam. And but we already learned this elsewhere. So explains the Gemara Sricha. We need both cases. Tiet Marbahi. If it only said that case over there by making a nether from Tashu Shamita, by he come around me from the left of Parnis. I would have thought Rav only said that Allah over there. Why? Because it's impossible to do what you will need to do with a third party. We're talking about having intimate relations with your wife. You can't supply a Parnis, a steward, a third party to do it in your stead. Avul Baha, but in our mission that we're talking about food, the Avshir Bibarnas, even Majid Shmuel. Then maybe Rav would agree to Shmuel that even Bistam, even indefinitely, maybe Rav would agree that you, yes, would supply with a third party. And therefore, we had to say that case. Viet Mar Baha, if only said the case by us, Bakam or Shmuel, Misham, the Avshir Bibarnas. The same thing, I would have thought by us, maybe it's only in our case that Shmuel says it's Alacha. That even when it's down, even when it's an indefinite open-ended nether, still you supply with a third party because it's possible with a third party. Avul Bahi, with the case over there, Moedi the Rav. 
Sricha says the Gemara, that's why we indeed need both the Machlek is Rabbi Shmuel in our case and in the case over there. Tanan says the Gemara, quoting our Mishnah, and in quoting this din in our Mishnah, we're going to get a lot more clarity in what the case is in the Mishnah. The Mishnah said, someone makes an editor, his wife cannot eat a specific fruit. And the Mishnah said, he has to divorce his wife. Which of course, inquiring minds are wondering, that's a little bit strange. All you said is your wife can't eat apples. Why are you getting divorced? So Tosis over here explains that what we're talking about is not a simple nether, just not to eat fruit. What he's saying is that if she eats said fruit, she's not going to be allowed to have relations. If you look at Tosis on the second narrow line of Lamaitis al Gadaitin to Odra Ihu, Vitalanu Bitashamita. He makes the nether and he hangs it on Dasha Shamita, meaning he says you can't eat this fruit, and if you do, you're not allowed to have the conjugal relations which husband and wife generally do. So says the Gemara. So can be Mavarish. According to Rav, I understand the Mishnah. In the latter case of the Mishnah, when the Mishnah said in this case of Pedro, you have to get divorced right away. Is you know why? Because it's Stam. He's not giving you a specific time period, and therefore the halacha is, according to Rav, you have to get divorced right away. And whereas the first part of the Mishnah was Bimafarish, where they explain 30 days, they have 30 days to figure things out. El Shmuel Kasha. According to Shmuel, that even in the case of Stam, we give them 30 days. So why in the case of Peirais are we saying in the Mishnah they have to get divorced right away? Explains the Gemara. Ew. The case is she made the nether. The case of Peirais is different. She made a nether that if I eat an apple, I'm not going to have relations with, his, with her husband. And then the husband was Mikayim the nether. The husband did not annul the vow, but rather he made it a complete vow. And that is the reason why Shmuel says you don't have to wait 30 days. Normally, even in a case of Stam, even in an unspecified, un- indefinite, indefinite amount of time, Shmuel says, give them 30 days, maybe you'll find the Pesach, maybe you'll be able to annul the vow. But if this was a case in which she made the nether and the husband certified the nether, obviously, he's not going to find a way to annul the vow if he was the one to certify the vow. And that is the reason why Shmuel agrees that in this case, Yoytzei Alter. And that is how we're going to explain how Rav and Shmuel can fit with our Mishnah. But the Gemara continues three lines from the wide lines and comments the Gemara. We have a Stam Mishnah. And we know that generally the rule is Stam Mishnah is are like Rameir. So says the Gemara, if our Mishnah is like Rameir, does Rameir, and Rameir seemingly would hold in our Mishnah that in a case where a woman makes a nether, and the husband could have annulled it and did not. It's paramount. It's considered as if he is the one that put it as if he put her finger between her teeth. And therefore, the wife can demand divorce. Basically, the wording of who knows in Esabin she now is a way of saying that he caused it. Because he caused it, she's allowed to demand the divorce. But I asked the Gemara of Savar Rameyer, Noisin Esabin she now, does Rameyer really hold that? Well, Tani learned that Abraham on the last narrow line. And the husband heard him did not know the law. Ramea, Rav Yudha, Imer, Mina, Isin, Ezra, Ben, Shina, oh. Says, Ramea, Rav Yudha, it's her fault. Even if the husband originally heard it and said nothing, later on he's allowed to annul it. Why? Because she's the one that made the nether, says Ramea, Rav Yudha. So I asked the Gemara, it's a plain in the contradiction. Vimamar, Yevsha, Bishan, Adronis. And if one wants to say, I can never have a woman who makes the darim, they'd say, Shlabi Ksuba. He does not have to give her the Ksuba because she brought it upon herself. Whereas if Yezi, Rav Lazar, I'm Rim, who knows, and that's been Shinel, he's the one that caused it. But what do we see? We see a contradiction within the opinion of Rameir. So he answers the Gemara on the fifth Y line, Epoch Rameir, Epoch, switch it around. So switching around the names in this b'raisa. So now further is the Gemara and asks, Based on what you're saying now, Rav Yoisi is one that say that she caused it. But now that's also problematic. We learned in the mission of Yoisi Aimer. In the case of Aniyos is when a poor person didn't give a set amount. 
So clearly Rabbi Yaisi holds that he's the one that caused it. So says Mar you're right, switch it again. Eimer Rameir Rabbi Yaisi Armi Munoisi. Rameir Rabbi Yaisi says he caused it. Rabbi Yudav Rabbi Lazar Armi Minasna. Says the Gemara. Further, Rav Yudah he knows the Vatanam. We learned in our Mishnah, Rav Yudah Eimer be Yisrael Yemechri Kaim. Yemechri Kaim. So Rav Yudah clearly does not hold that she caused it. Holds that he caused it. So we have three opinions that the Gemara is proving that in the case where she makes a nether and the husband fulfills it, that it's viewed as if he caused it. So says the Gemara, Eima, Ramey, Rav Yehuda, Rav Yaisi, Armi Munais, and Rav Eliyazar, Aim Rami, Nasna. That's terrorist number one. And says the Gemara, but if you're going to tell me, that's a pretty difficult answer to say. Because to say that we mixed up names and we mixed up the pair, I understand. But to mix it up so much that it's really three versus one, that's difficult. So therefore, what should we do? And the fact that it's going to come out to be not like Rameir, says the Gemara, we could just say, the Stam Mishnah is not like Rameir. Because let's remind ourselves, three lines of the white lines, we got ourselves into this mess when we assumed that because we had a Stam Mishnah, it wasn't like Rameir. But comments the Gemara now, that maybe that is not accurate. Ask the Gemara back what we just said, Vesava Rav Yaisi. Vesava Rav Yaisi Ba'ani Yishlanas and Kitzvah. Arts of Rav Yaisi, hold that we're talking about a case of a poor woman. That didn't get a de- definitive time period on when she's allowed to put on makeup. Alma So we see the husband could another vow. For Remy no last two contradiction. These are the entities that husband's letter. No varm shish rem inoy nafesh. Things that are physical. I'm going to be there or not. I'm going to put on makeup and perfume. I'm going to put on makeup and perfume. argues and says that putting on makeup is not inoy nafesh. And rather, I'm not going to put on um, makeup or I'm not going to get dressed. But big day, so ask the Gemara, what is the opinion of Rav Yaisi? Is the opinion of Rav Yaisi that perfume, makeup is considered Idri Nefesh or not? Idri Nefesh or not? So answers the Gemara and I in Alpha Mabe is the first line Akhabamaya Skinon Tvarim Shabainai Libaina. Explains the Gemara that when we said matters of adornment, it didn't mean putting on makeup. It meant physical intimacy, matters between him and her, means that she made a neda that she's not going to remove her sairis, she's not going to remove her pubic hairs. And in that scenario, even Rav Yaisi agrees that that is something that affects the husband, and therefore the husband is going to, yes, be able to annul such a vow. Says the Gemara, that's very good for Rav Yaisi. Ha, pot, ha, nichalam, that's only if you hold that matters between husband and wife. The husband could yes and no. We learned in the price. Why? You know why Ravuna says that the husband cannot annul it? Because we never find a fox that dies in his own fox. So literally, what, is that? what does that mean? The Rav, Rav, Rav Adabarava is agreeing that a husband, of course, can annul a vow that has to do with the attachment with physical intimacy. But he says, in our case, of just adorning yourself or removing the Cyrus, removing your pubic hair, that's not such a big deal. So says Rav Adabarava, his husband and wife will know how to have Tashmish, whether or not she shaves herself or not. And therefore, Rav Yaisi would say this is not a matter of Inui Nefesh. So says the Gemara, according to that, similar like we saw in Amad Aleph, that he, she is making, her putting on makeup dependent upon relations. Because she says that the pleasure of Tashish will be forbidden if I put on makeup. So now clearly the putting on makeup is a matter that has to do with Tashmish. And therefore the husband, of course, is able to know that vow. So says the Gemara, what does it seem like based on what we just said? It seems like it's going to come out that if the husband says nothing, then that which his wife said is going to work. 
This works with Rav Kano, Dom Rav Kano. Hanos tashmishi olecho koifo misham shasoi. Hanos tashmishcho olai. Yofer. Says Rav Ado. Excuse me. Says Rav Kahano. That if the woman says, no, tashmishi olecho, the benefit of tashmish with me is forbidden to you, then there's no validity. And he can force her. This goes back to that which we learned in the Mishnah in the beginning of the Parak. He can enforce her to have tashmish. But if she says the benefit with you is forbidden to me, then the husband should indeed be made for it or else it's going to, yes, take effect. Why? Because if she's forbidding herself to have the benefit from him, that's something that we're not going to let her eat because we never give something to someone that is forbidden and therefore the husband has to annul such a vow. Says the Gemara, but one second. But Ask the Gemara, I don't understand. Let her not adorn herself. Let her not become forbidden. And since the bull is in her park, she has the option whether to yes adorn herself or not. So she has the ability to whether yes make this nether chal or not. So why is this a nether that necessarily is considered something of inu nefesh, something of intimacy between him and her? She could just bypass the whole story by putting on her makeup. Answers the Gemara and Cain Karula Minuvelas. You know why? Because if she doesn't put on makeup and does not become forbidden, then what's going to happen? They're going to call her a Minuvelas. They're going to call her repulsive. So therefore, she's inevitably going to put on makeup and adorn herself, and thereby become forbidden to her husband. And therefore, it's something that's considered Varm Shabbino Levino. Asks the Gemara of Tiskashit. So says the Gemara, I don't understand. Let her put on makeup and let her become forbidden to her husband. As we saw in the Mishnah, that according to Beisham, my husband and wife could stay apart for two weeks. According to Beisham, one week. Why are we saying now this is something that calls for, calls for immediate divorce? Answers the Gemara, honey, me, the Echo, the Adre, Eho, the Safa, Mirzach, Rosach, Luye, Pasha, Maisef, Daite. Says the Gemara, when did the Mishnah say that we have the two weeks or the one week? That's only when he thinks she's angry. And any moment, he'll, she'll, he'll, and any moment, excuse me, she thinks he was angry. And any moment, he'll come down. So that's why we wait the week or two, according to Beisham and Beisillah. But in this case, the Nadu Ihi, Vishasak law, she made the Nadar, Vishasak law, Sarmin Ishtag Misna, the Sunny law, she thinks he hates me, and therefore he's never going to know this vow. And that's the reason why we forced them to get divorced right away. And we conclude this segment of the Shir with Rabbi Yaisi Aymer. We're approximately 20 lines down, 25 lines down. First one is Aymer. We're seven lines from the Mishnah. Says Rav Yaisi, Ba'aniyot Shaloi Nosan Kitzva. Says Rav Yaisi, the case of Ani, he divorced his wife only if she did not give a time for the neder. Asks the Gemara of Ekama Kitzva, how much time is a set amount? Am Rav Yud, Am Rishmol, Yud Beis Chaydesh. Rav Rachan, Am Rav Yechel, and Eser Shanim. Rav Chist, Am Rav Yimi, Regal, Shekim, Reisi, Som, Skat, Shez, Regal. Arguing about how common and how potentially is it avail- uh, uh, possible to stay with her while she's not going to get dressed up. Whether it's 12 months, whether it's 10 years, or whether it's only one Yantif. Because every Yantif is when the Yiddish woman would put on makeup and adorn themselves. And we conclude, Ubashir Islam, Yom, the Ravis, he said, a wealthy woman, the maximum time they could be without makeup is 30 days. Maishna Lam, Yom, says, what's 30 days? I'm Rabbi Shkin Isha Chashuva. Nanis Meirea Kishutel, Lam, Yom. A Chashuva woman gets benefit from the fragrance for 30 days. And let's begin the new Mishnah about halfway down, Ayin Aleph, I'm a base. Hamadir Ez Isha Shlotelich Labes Avia. If someone makes a nether with his wife that she's not allowed, She now let it go to her father's house. What's the halacha? Bizman shehu ima be'ir chaydash. Echad yekayim shtayim yotivi ting suba. Says the Mishnah, if the father is in the same city, then if the nether is a month or less, they stay married. Shnayim, but if the nether was for two months, yotivi ting suba has to divorce her. Bizman shehu be'ir acharis, but if the father is in another city, then it doesn't go by a month or two months. That for one month they stay married, but if the nether was for three months, they get divorced. Case number one in the Mishnah. Case number two, 
if someone makes a neder that his wife cannot go to house of mourning or oile beis amishta, yoytiv yitik suba, she has to get divorced right away. Mimei shenoyel bifanel, he is slamming the door, he's locking the door in front of her. Vimayatoyin mishum davar acher. But let's say the husband says the reason he made this neder is because of davar acher. The Gemara will explain what that means. Rasha is allowed. Amar la. And the third and final case of the Mishnah, the husband says to his wife, Amnasha to Amri Leploini Mashamartili, that I'm making a nadar that you tell such a person what you said to me, Aisha Mashamartil Khar, what he said to you, Aisha Taimim Leo Myra La Ashba, or that you fill up and you pour out into the garbage. Yait Sevi eating Suba and the Umar will explain the case. So let's just conclude today's year with delving into the first case of the Mishnah. Says the Gemara, Hagufa Kasha Tastira. It says that seemingly only one yom if you can stay married, and she's not allowed to go to her father's house if he's in another city. But two, you cannot. We've seen already, Kenneth gets extra time because they can never get remarried once there is divorce. Of Yuda, he and it's opinion of Rabbi Yuda. Rabbi Ula Amr Lakasha no Kambi Radufa Kan Bishaina Radufa says Rabbi Ula different heretz. The difference is whether it is Radufa or not. The whether we're talking about a woman who's eager to go to her father's house, then it's the difference between one or two months. If she's not eager, it's two or three. And we conclude with how Basik says the Gemara, oh Zayisi Bain of Kemaiti Shalom. That it was in my eyes, like one who found to be perfect. This is referring to a bride who is found to be perfect in the father-in-law's house. And then they run, eager run to tell the shvachim to her father's house. We'll pick it up from a mother's ishtai in the next year.